Aloha, I'm Jack Dugan, and this is Hawaii Tourism Now. Today we sit down with Mayor Kawakami of Kauai Island to ask some very tough questions about the economy on Kauai, as well as the tourism industry on the island. Aloha, Mayor Kawakami, thank you so much for joining us today. Aloha. Pleasure to have you. Thank you for taking time. I'm sure it's been a busy day for you and, and a busy time in general to answer some questions. So today we want to talk about um, the tourism industry and some, get some of your ideas about that. So I'll start with the first question here. Um, so my understanding is, is that within all the Hawaiian islands, um, Kauai specifically is one of the most vulnerable islands I've heard um, with the current uh, pandemic. What is your sense of the island's ability to handle the COVID-19 disease as it relates to your healthcare system there? Well, um, first off, uh, you know, our healthcare system is, um, that, that's our lifeline right there. We depend on those folks to keep us healthy and safe on a day-to-day -day basis. And so, um, you know, we did the, the right thing during the first phase at the stay-at-home order. Um, we had some very restrictive measures put in and it is because we're vulnerable. And if people can recall, um, there was a big run on basic PPE that our healthcare workers and first responders depend on. And, uh, you know, when we're competing with every other large city um, in the world, uh, you, you're going to get a supply chain disruption. And, you know, we are, um, as a state, geographically isolated. So it's not like people can truck over PPE, uh, you know, over state lines to us. And so, you know, we're sort of like... Um, uh, sitting ducks when it comes to a, a, you know, a heavy situation such as this. And so, you know, we were able to do the right thing, uh, allow our healthcare workers to um, build up a, a good supply of PPE, the testing capacity uh, from the very beginning. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a slow start, but uh, since then it's been amazing how fast um, we've been able to increase our testing capability. I think Wilcox Hospital has indicated that they do have the ability to work with uh, clinical labs to run antibody tests. And I know there's other people out there that can mm -hmm. antibody tests as well. Um, so, you know, we're, we're in a good place uh, right now, but um, this is a period of time as we um, open up where we have to constantly remind the people that you gotta keep your, keep your guard up. You know, keep your chin down and your hands up and uh, don't become complacent because uh, as we can all recall, it just took, um, you know, one individual uh, and the rate that this virus can spread because of the long incubation period and because you can be asymptomatic and still be um, contagious um, makes it even more challenging. But, you know, our healthcare system on Kauai, um, Looks like they're in a pretty good place. We just got to do our part. That's what it comes down to. There's nothing that government can do or a healthcare system can do if uh, people let their guard down and become complacent. And that's why we drill it every day. You know, basic hygiene, wash your hands, don't touch your face. Uh, if everybody's wearing a mask, it helps keep your germs to yourself. And, you know, I hear people say all the time that, you know, we're COVID free, we're COVID free. Yeah, maybe we are. But, uh, you know, people are still traveling back and forth, whether it be for work or medical appointments. And um, the risk all around our island uh, still exists. So we, we are not in the woods, um, but we're in a good place as of today. That's great to hear. Yeah, thank you for all of that. Thank you. Yeah, we know that uh, tourism is obviously critical for all of the Hawaiian islands and Kauai Island. Um, how would you describe how critical it truly is for, for your island, uh, Kauai, and how long can um, the island survive without tourism? Well, you know, the visitor industry in general is um, the, the, the base foundation of our economy. Everything from county and state government to uh, all the, uh, you know, the auxiliary jobs that it provides um, you know, the visitor industry is um, the, the foundation of our economy. Um, as far as how long we can survive without tourism, well, you know, um, we've been working for years to diversify our economy, focusing on ag, uh, health and wellness, science and technology. Um, we do have a, a good ag presence here. 
And um, currently, as we speak, you know, we have our Office of Economic Development that's partnered up with uh, different agencies, such as the Kauai Chamber of Commerce, Kauai Economic Development Board, and um, from the private sector as well, to, um, to, to really draft up two strategies, one short-term for short-term immediate relief, and then, of course, our long-term economic strategy as we, as we move along down the road. But I have to say that uh, getting our visitor industry um, to a place where we can coexist and be uh, healthy is, is going to be vital to this recovery effort. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> In uh, maybe simple terms, uh, so it can just be broadly uh, and easily understood, how, how big is Kauai's tourism industry in terms of maybe employment and uh, maybe revenues? Uh, well, revenue-wise, it, it's, it's critical. Uh, as far as providing jobs, um, just, so, just as well, it's the largest employer, about 35, uh, between 35 and 36,000 jobs. Um, are born out of the visitor industry. And then all the other small mom and pops and local businesses that are dependent on the visitor industry um, are, are, you know, uh, it's a critical lifeline uh, for them as well. So um, that question um, is, is an easy one off the top of my head. Uh, how we're going to be able to get back um, is going to be a big challenge uh, because it's going to require the ability to understand that there's always going to be a risk. Uh, what can we do for our community to make sure that they're taking preventative measures? Um, but in the meantime, I, I would like to just say that it's also critical for policymakers and government and for the industry itself to sort of take this time to see how we can make improvements to how visitors uh, get to experience Kauai, how we can address some long-standing issues that haven't been resolved. And one, one good example is after the rain event in 2018, you know, through a collaborative effort with the state of Hawaii and the county of Kauai and many different uh, nonprofit organizations, we're able to utilize that disaster as a time to hit the, the, the pause and reset button. And uh, you know now uh, people see the North Shore in a very different way than they got to see it in the past, uh, specifically speaking about K.A. Beach Park, um, you know, the, the Hanalei Initiative uh, started mm -hmm. North Shore Shuttle. Um, now to get to K.A., you have to make a reservation. There is a, a, a capacity limit as far as parking down there, uh, people need to take um, the shuttle to get down there. And I think um, really that, that's what we should be uh, striving for. And I know we have a lot of things to juggle, but we have to look at the, the long-term impact of the return of the visitor industry and, and how we can utilize this moment to make some adjustments so that uh, people can coexist, that we can have a healthy, vibrant, visitor industry that doesn't overly impact the local residents that have to live here on the day in and day out of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I, it, it sounds like the example of the North Shore um, reset, as you described, it, it, the, the benefit <clears throat> seems to be also for the visitors where I, we hear a lot of talk about the quality uh, and you hear the complaints from the visitors as well, not just the local community, but of too many cars or no parking or um, unfriendliness and things like that. So it sounds like that may be a example of the quality that we hear going around a lot, the experience that Hawaii wants to provide and, and Kauai Island as well. But sometimes it's harder when there's mismanagement or, or so much volume that it becomes problematic. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, people get to experience Kauai um, right now, uh, as far as the people that live here, uh, they get to see um, what it looks like to not have so much rental cars on the road at the same time. And, um, you know, there, there's, always, um, there's always a balance to things. And that's what it basically comes down to, is making sure that we can strike the right balance uh, so that we have a healthy economy, uh, people have jobs, but it doesn't impose on our quality of life um, too much where it becomes a, a point of frustration because uh, we wanna maintain that Aloha spirit 
and um, and you know we want to make sure that we're taking care of our basic needs as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So um, this isn't really a, a pleasant question to ask, or I'm sure for you to answer. But do you know the the numbers of the amount of the population that's currently unemployed uh, there in Kauai? I think as of um, early May, the numbers were uh, the numbers were creeping up to almost 18,000 um, compared to last year where I think we had about 1,400. Wow. And so the impact of this pandemic uh, and the unemployment rate um, has put, I think, all of us uh, in the state of Hawaii in a position that we hadn't anticipated. Uh, I surely didn't ever anticipate seeing this type of unemployment numbers uh, we went from having a very low unemployment rate where employers had a hard time finding workers uh, to, to some of the highest, uh, and I know definitely the highest in my lifetime and uh, many people's lifetimes as well. Yeah. And so going back to tourism and, and how it may open, what are some of the key factors that you yourself and other elected officials will be paying attention to before you can really consider reopening tourism to Kauai? You know, that's a very, you know, when you think about it, it it's a, it, it's a monumental task to, to try to wrap your head around uh, how do we go about uh, getting the visitor industry restarted. When you take a look uh, outside of our little bubble, outside of Hawaii, and you take a look that globally, you know, you're still seeing increased cases. Um, you're still seeing certain areas uh, that, are, that are trying to flatten the curve. Uh, you're seeing places that are getting impacted by a second surge because they perhaps opened the economy and perhaps people got complacent. But if you take that big uh, monumental task and try to make your world real small, uh, meaning, you break down these big challenges into smaller challenges. Uh, some of the things that have been talked about, um, you know, with, with the governor, with Haima, with the other mayors, are, is having a, a good uh, testing capacity and program, having a good ability to quickly uh, run those tests, um, isolate anybody that's ill, quarantine any close contacts, and it boils down to contact tracing. So I know that statewide, um, many, uh, in fact, all the counties have been working towards increasing their capacity of trained associates to, to do contact tracing. You know, here on Kauai, our di District Department of Health uh, officer, Dr. Janet Berman and her team have been training a number of contact tracers. And uh, get to that training we're going to run them through drills you know it's like a, a sport they, they get taught the, the basics and then we'll run them through contact tracing drills where one day i'll show up and i'll tell them i'm the mayor of Kauai. I, i'm tested positive for covid19 uh let's go see you contact trace all the close contacts and wow. um really get their skills home hmm. wow that's yeah, quite an effort it sounds like glad to hear that there's good progress being made right now. Um, so as far as some specific milestones to summarize that before tourism could open, I know, like you said, it's a very monumental undertaking. The, the contact tracing, you mentioned, I think, um, screening, pre-arrival screening. I, I know some of the other um, mayors and uh, Lieutenant Governor on a recent call also shared that. Is that something that you share as well, the, the necessity to test people before they come? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, it's so, um, you know, this, this challenge is really tricky just because of the amount of information uh, we do know, but more so the, the, the tons of information that we, we don't know. We're still learning uh, many different things about this virus, but the technology is moving um, very quickly as well. And so there's many factors. And, you know, in this case, there's, there's no uh, silver bullet um, as far as a good comprehensive program uh, to make sure that the visitor industry can get kickstarted again. But yeah, pre-screening, um, we've heard about thermal scanning, which of course will, will catch anybody that, that is symptomatic. 
Um, but it's uh, when somebody is asymptomatic where it poses the biggest uh, threat. And of course, you know, there's a race to, to find a vaccine and, and antiviral medication. Where that is on the horizon, uh, you know, I take everything I hear with a grain of salt. But yeah, it's, it's going to be a multi-pronged approach. But, you know, the sooner that Hawaii can really stabilize, which it looks like we're all heading in that right direction, the slowly we can phase in uh, certain components of restarting that visitor industry. And what I talk about is starting up with a local based visitor industry, um, such as what we're trying to achieve on Kauai. And that's why, you know, our first uh, action during the act with care phase is we identified some industries like uh, tour and, and, and guide based experiences. So those ATV tours, zip lining tours, uh, those horseback tours. You know, there's a number of um, local residents that may uh, sort of want to experience those experiences that maybe during peak, uh, the, the peak visitor season, they, they can't. And then of course we're looking at uh, inter-island travel um, between uh, island to island. Um, and every day looks uh, better than the last as far as uh, our, our ability to keep the situation stable, at least in the state of Hawaii. Thank you for that. It, it, it brought something up in my head. Um, I've spoken with a lot of, you know, different visitor businesses and their leaders and owners. And, you know, it comes up sometimes about, is there a potential market for some level of Kama'aina, um, you know, uh, being involved in, in those tours and, and activities that are typically 99% visitors. And, you know, there's talk about it, but I, um, I'm curious. So as, as mayor uh, and the government, is, that, is there an involvement on your end in trying to c cultivate some sort of program for um, inner island and, and Kama'aina visitor activity type thing? Yeah, absolutely. You know, our um, Office of Economic Development and the, the Koi Economic Recovery Strategy Team has been working on programs like a shop local program. And of course, um, you know, the one big component that, um, you know, I think the neighbor islands are all sort of uh, waiting to see is, um, you know, there's a, a, a CARES Act funding that came down from Congress. Um, Senator Schatz has been working very closely with us. Um, you know, the, the flaw with that first um, uh, a federal relief package was that, um, you know, it was designed for uh, cities over uh, 500,000 people. So, you know, the city and county of Honolulu uh, was able to receive their CARES Act funding um, a while ago. Uh, the neighbor islands are uh, pre-planning and pre-staging um, our top priorities as we uh, sort of await uh, that relief package to get down to us as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it's an impossible question. I know you've touched around it a lot. Um, if you had to peg some sort of forecast on when you foresee tourism beginning to return, at least the first stages of it, do you have any timeline for our audience you might be able to put out there? No. And I say that just because, um, you know, we're collaborating with, with Governor Ige. That, that is one component where uh, it's going to require much more collaborative um, effort uh, on a statewide manner. Some of them are easier to do county by county. And uh, I just got to always be mindful that whatever date comes out of my mouth, mm -hmm. whether it's an estimate, uh, people tend to hold that date in concrete. Um, so I wouldn't want to overpromise and underdeliver or underpromise and overdeliver because um, it, it's still uh, it's still questionable as to where we are um, as far as uh, our ability to kickstart that first phase, um, which would be uh, dropping the inner island uh, mandatory quarantine and allowing inter-island travelers to traverse back and forth between islands. Mm -hmm. And I hate to, to answer that question that way, um, but it is the best way I could possibly answer that question at this point in time. Thank you, I, I appreciate your honesty. So um, you mentioned earlier in our conversation about uh, diversification 
um, you know, how critical obviously tourism is to uh, Kauai, but also um, you talked some about diversification in other industries. Do um, you want to talk a little more, anything specific, any uh, industries that have kind of popped out as, as something more promising, potentially in the near term, especially for those that are unemployed and are eager to get back to work? Sure, you know, we've already um, had identified uh, certain industry clusters that we felt would be a good fit for Kauai. Um, I think first and foremost, uh, I, I would like to just um, preface what I'm about to say that uh, in order for any of these programs to work, uh, it, it needs to uh, coexist with uh, the goose that lays that golden egg, which is uh, tourism. Um, but we are looking at uh, agriculture. You know, Kauai um, used to have a very vibrant uh, ag presence, and uh, it's not easy to to farm, and it's definitely not easy to make money in agriculture. But I think that this situation is a good reminder for all of the policymakers and leaders um, of how exposed we are to any sort of supply chain disruption uh, when it comes down to uh, our, our source of food. Um, so agriculture is something that we've always looked at. Something that I've always um, been very big on uh, is uh, uh, industry uh, vibrancy in, in high technology mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, science-based type of uh, industry as well. Um, we got to have a robust uh, 21st century broadband presence and infrastructure to allow um, that to happen. And um, so anything uh, that's tied to that industry, and of course, um, health and wellness would be a huge uh, component as well. You know, on Kauai and in Hawaii in general, uh, you know, we, we have a good quality of life. Um, we have a, a good life expectancy. We have a number of uh, seniors. I myself one day plan to grow old and into my kupuna years. And if there's any way that we can start looking at some sort of geriatric uh, health and wellness industry, um, those are all good industries that can pay living wages and they provide quality jobs. Okay, thanks for all that. You know, the people of Kauai, as, as you are aware, are known around the world for their, you know, active and alive spirit of aloha, being caring, respectful, grateful people. and um, Right now, with the message to visitors being, you know, we, we love you and appreciate you, but unfortunately you can't come and right now you're not welcome. What, how, how do you manage that message to the visitors that are eager to come back and, and experience um, what they love about Kauai? I think most people get it. You know, there's a time and place. You know, if you love Kauai and our people, uh, you know, we're hoping that people can understand that we're uh, especially vulnerable just on a normal day to day. You know, some of our healthcare systems are near capacity or at capacity. And, um, you know, we don't want to see history repeat itself um, where you have people come in and bring a virus in and infect a whole lot of people, um, you know, on an island. Uh, but I, I, I think most people get it. You know, the emails that I see from some visitors asking, hey, when do you think um, Koi is going to reopen? We're really looking forward to, to coming here and, you know, we want to be respectful. Uh, you know, that, that's the kind of sentiment that really touches our heart because, you know, people get it. Um, and it's just, uh, you know, people um, during the first phase were, were fearful. And, and I was fearful. And um, when you see that the biggest threat uh, are incoming arrivals from um, outside of Hawaii, and you still see people coming in, um, not only were, was I fearful for our people's safety, uh, I was fearful for some of the visitors that were continuing to come in. And, and that's the God honest truth. You know, when people are afraid and they feel backed up in a corner, um, you know, unexpected things can happen. Um, but I think, you know, this is all temporary. Um, like I said, uh, there's a time and place for everything. And when we get to that time and place where, you know, where, where it's right, uh, we'll welcome those visitors back in and, and the 
economic stimulus that they bring with them. Uh, but right now, you know, it's like walking on eggshells. Uh, and, you know, everything is, everything is temporary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for all that. Makes a lot of sense. You see, um, or at least I've seen, you know, especially online and social media, different responses from people that, that have visited here and, and want to come back. And I, I tend to agree that people that, um, there's a lot of people out there that truly um, understand and appreciate and they're not looking at it is necessarily about them, but um, about caring for the islands as we all need to in a, in a special way. Is there anything else that you'd like to say to our audience, um, visitors, uh, locals, uh, Kama Aina, throughout Hawaii and, and around the world? No, nah, you know, this is, um, I tell you, uh, I think every mayor or new mayor, such as myself, we always have it in the back of our mind, like, uh, especially on Kauai, we, Koi, we've seen our fair share of disasters. So I think we all come in thinking, you know, what disaster um, am I going to inherit during my time um, as mayor? And this is something that I can say I never anticipated. Um, but I feel very honored and blessed to be put in a situation uh, to, to help people to try and keep people safe and to protect the island. Uh, we have a fantastic team. To the visitors out there, um, I just wanna say that we appreciate your patience and understanding during these difficult times. And uh, you know, we're, we're all gonna get out of this um, and we're all gonna return to some sense of normalcy. And life will go on and we will move forward and we will learn from this challenging situation and it will make us stronger as a community. It'll make us better as leaders if we decide to take a look at what worked and didn't work and make adjustments and not repeat it if this should ever happen again. And at the end of the day, I just feel very blessed that uh, God decided to put me here on Kauai uh, in the state of Hawaii, uh, where we have some base, uh, we have some base uh, ways of life, such as kokua, you know, laulima, everybody coming together. And I see that happening on Kauai every single day. You know, I told our folks, we're going to see the, uh, we're going to see heroes emerging from the unlikeliest of places. And we do every single day. There's people that have been, uh, laid off or furloughed um, that are still awaiting their unemployment checks that are saying, hey, you know, they're reaching out and saying, hey, you know, um, it's hard, but it's hard for many other people. You know, how can I help out? And, and um, that type of generosity and spirit that we're seeing from the people of Kauai um, truly is what inspires our team and gives us that fuel to just grind uh, day in and day out to make sure we get out of this situation together. Thank you. That's, that's really inspiring. Thank you so much. It's funny. I'll share one, one little bit here from Maui where I live up country. Maui, there's a, a corner uh, on my way home where oftentimes people will sell banana bread or some fruit or things like that. The other day I was driving by and there's a, a man in a truck, not, not a nice new truck, just an older truck. And it had a sign, you know, free avocados for your Ohana. And that was it. And I just drove by and it put the biggest smile on my face because I've never seen that, you know, just someone out there on the corner giving away for, for people's families in Ohana um, to the point you were making. It, it is, uh, you've seen a lot of great things. So glad to hear that's your perspective as well. Mayor Kawakami, thank you so much for your time today. And uh, thank you for your honesty in, in the interview with a handful of very tough questions. Really appreciate it. No, thank you. And I really appreciate the um, opportunity to, to take some time to chat with you folks. And you guys take care and God bless and aloha. Same to you. Aloha. Bye-bye.